I'm Marie Green from XR Today, bringing you the latest in news and conversation from the extended reality space. Today, I'm joined by Over co-founders Davide Catini, the Chief of Executive Officer, and Diego Di Tommaso, the Chief Operations Officer. I'd like to thank you both for joining me today. Well, Hi. Hi. Hi, thank you so much, guys. So let's start us off. Can you introduce uh, an AR metaverse and what is the need of a decentralized digital infrastructure? Yeah, maybe uh, maybe I can start. So, I mean, uh, we're all quite familiar, I mean, at least at this point, what, uh, what is a metaverse, at least uh, in the, the incumbents right now, the, in general, the metaverses are VR metaverses. So uh, experiences that are in some way occlusive uh, then it kind of isolates you from uh, the physical world. So the idea of an augmented reality metaverse, it's really to actually augment uh, the physical world with what we call mixed reality. Uh, and what is mixed reality in our case? Uh, it means that uh, we are editing the physical world. So we are doing uh, experiences that are customized to specific geographic locations. So uh, it's geolocalized AI. So regarding the second part of your question, why building this with a decentralized infrastructure uh, and basically why, we ba why this is built on Web3? Uh, that's because uh, we uh, build it, when we were thinking about building this company back in 2018, uh, we decided to get something that was different from uh, the classic Web2 businesses. Uh, and the main di difference is that basically in Web2, the business structure showed that the most of the value is retained by a central company. While with Web3, uh, with the potential to actually assign ownership of digital contents, uh, thanks to this opportunity, basically the ownership of the value uh, that is generated by this platform can be distributed uh, uh, in the hands of their participants. And maybe I can give uh, some examples to, to make it more I mean, clear. So, uh, you know the the way the way it works. I mean the the way we represent digital ownership thanks to Web three uh, is intermediated by what is called NFTs or non fungible tokens. So non non fungible tokens allows to actually own unique digital assets. And when we talk about the metaverse, uh, all assets are digital. Actually, all the assets that exist are digital. And from the content, so the contents are unique digital assets, so are an NFTs. Uh, but not only that, in our case, is also the infrastructure that is based on NFTs. So uh, what I mean by that? Uh, so in, in Over, we have three main layers to build this metaverse. So one is the ownership layer uh, that gives you control uh, to what experience is in what location. So just like in the web, you have a web domain. You, you own, for example, coca-cola.com. You decide what's the content over there. In our case, you own geographic coordinates. So if you own specific geographic coordinates, for example, the Colosseum, the, X, the hexagon that represents the Colosseum, you can publish content over there. So the way we represent this ownership is through NFTs. So you own an NFT that represents a spatial domain. So in the web, web domains, in our case, we have spatial domains. And this is the base layer, so the ownership layer. Then we have a mapping layer and a builder. So the builder is not really involved in Web3, but the second layer that for us also is very critical in the augmented reality metaverse uh, also allows for ownership from the community. So uh, I, I will dig a little bit in this. So when you do uh, geolocalized augmented reality, you need a system to localize in space precisely. And the easy way to do that is GPS. And we saw uh, some amazing use cases uh, with GPS, GPS only, for example, Pokemon Go, a great success, probably the first uh, story of AR. When you talk to somebody about AR, he doesn't know about AR, you told him about Pokemon Go, immediately understand. So that use case uses GPS and is not very precise, accurate, but it's not a problem because for that use case, you just go around the world and collect Pokemons wherever they are. But if you want to edit the physical world while we are doing, you need to have something more. You need to have a more precision, and especially you need to have a system that also works indoor. For example, you want to augment a shop window in a mall, you need to know exactly where you are in space. So in order to achieve this, you need to map locations. And it's not only us doing that. For example, Google, Niantic, Microsoft, are all researching in this direction. If you are in New York, you are using Google Maps, uh, the GPS will not work and the phone will ask you to point to the buildings 
and we switch the optical system to, under, to understand where, the, where you are. So Google can do that because they map locations, but those maps uh, are owned by Google. And so also all the value that comes out from this system is owned by Google. So in our system, since this is based on Web3, uh, the people that actually map the location generate an NFT that uh, represents that map. And the value that is extracted from that map is theirs, unless they sell it or so on. So this is, I mean, the two main components that uh, we, I mean, inject uh, in this Web3 metaverse in order to uh, really make it uh, owned by the community. And that's why we built it that way. I hope I answer your question. Yes, no, you answered my question brilliantly. Um, I'd like to go back a little bit to some of the technologies that you mentioned. You mentioned geolocalization. Um, could you give us a bit more of a deeper overview into some more of the Web3 and augmented reality technologies that you're implementing into your service? Yeah, I so, want that to explain okay. Yeah, so uh, going back to uh, the op, so I will divide this again in objects and uh, ownership of digital lands and maps. So regarding the objects, uh, in our view, uh, in general, uh, if an object is not represented by an NFT in the open metaverse, so in the metaverse based on Web3, it doesn't exist. Uh, because otherwise the object is just ephemeral and you cannot really move it between different metaverses. So the fact that we have this NFT standard allows you to have true ownership of an object, of the 3D object. And what does it mean to have true ownership? It means that that object can actually live also outside of the platform where it was created. So if I create an NFT on over, I can bring it also to another metaverse. And same thing on the opposite. For example, uh, we integrated uh, the NFTs from Sandbox. So if you own a Sandbox character right now, not only you can visualize it on over, but you can also play with it. I mean, you can use all of the characteristics that that object has. So this is enabled by Web3 uh, in general and specifically by the NFT standard uh, that creates, creates an uni a unique and a permanent object that you can actually really own. Uh, and so the ownership is not anymore, uh, and, and existence is not anymore uh, based on the platform where this was born, uh, but it's totally independent because it's written on a blockchain. So this is for objects. And coming back to uh, the ownership layer, uh, the, uh, we as I was mentioning before, we divided the world uh, in hexagons of 300 square meters. These are our spatial domains. So if you own one of these hexagons, for example, as I was saying before, you own the Colosseum uh, that is represented by an NFT, you can actually decide to publish augmented reality content in that location. And only you can decide what content will be there. Same thing it goes, for example, with Web2 to, to make a comparison. And finally, regarding the maps, uh, the way it works uh, is that, as a, again, usually you just use GPS to locate your space, but it's not enough and especially it doesn't work indoor. So in order to solve the pro this problem, what you have to do is to have a map, a 3D map of the location. How do you generate this map? In our system, it works like that. You just need to have a normal mobile phone uh, with a normal RGB camera, smartphone. And of course, you can uh, take pictures of that location. We have a, an UI and UX that uh, guides you to this process. It's like five to 10 minutes. From this raw data, from these pictures, uh, we generate three things. So first, uh, we generate uh, a 3D map, a point cloud that can be used by the creator to actually have some reference 3D about how the environment is. So if you want to put, uh, I don't know, a work of art in a specific wall, you will have the representation of that specific world. So you have a reference system to actually locate assets in space. Uh, two, we train a, neur a neural network. So the next, if then the next time a camera of the phone sees that location, understands where you are in space with 20 centimeters accuracy. The same that basically your eyes do, because when you look around you, you understand where you are, where you are in space by looking around and understanding the surroundings. And finally, a third thing that we are doing that uh, right now, I mean, it's, let's say in alpha, but uh, we will see it uh, in the next month out there. Um, it's uh, a neural render. So from these pictures, we, we can also recreate uh, a 3D reconstruction and doing a flight through uh, the location. So uh, in this way, we also move towards the idea of this digital twinning of locations. And again, we believe that this data, this 3D structure of the physical world is actually the gate 
to the augmented reality metrics. Because without this data, you can only build some use cases, like for example, the Pokemon Go that I was mentioning before, but you cannot tap in uh, in all of the other augmented reality use cases that usually people imagine uh, when they think about uh, augmented reality. Brilliant. There's a lot of solutions there to think about, a lot of tools. Um, it's interesting to hear the use of digital twins, which is such a prevailing technology in its own right. Um, so that might go, and that the t t conversation about digital twins alongside an operability as well that you're talking about might come into the next question about the what are the keys to, what are the keys to success? Excuse me, for a small to medium sized business when adopting shared AR content in a campaign. Diego, maybe you can start off with this one and move it on to the day after. Oh, yes, of course. So, I mean, there's, you know, we're really at the beginning of this um, augmented reality revolution, I would say. And because of that, uh, the good thing is that this is a kind of pristine uh, means of communication. Uh, if we think of, of all about other social media and so on, they are polluted uh, with marketing and so on. So, and a big part of our time is about filtering this out. So uh, at first advantage of augmented reality is this, that since, uh, I mean, this is very new, uh, also uh, only the fact that you present something in AR uh, is still an added value because it's something that uh, by itself uh, is entertaining uh, because people is not used to this. So this is uh, like a, a first base, I would say, framework that uh, business, more businesses and big business need to think about uh, when they think about AR. So a new means, and it means where that they can use to communicate and to do marketing also, of course, uh, but something that doesn't feel like uh, you're just feeding them another AD and so on, but you're giving also them something that is entertaining. And, 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 and building on that, on the fact of entertainment, in fact, if we, if we think about AR, the first use cases that I success again, I go back to Pokemon Go, was entertainment. And so probably, I mean, uh, uh, it will be like that for some time. So some of the use cases will be entertainment, but also we already see uh, some big corps, like for example, Apple, that are uh, taking so many efforts to actually showcase uh, their products in AR. And again, there's a good reason for that, because if you see an object in AR, uh, the impression that you have in, of this object is much more stronger than just seeing this object, for example, in 2D or 3D on a screen. Uh, just because our brain is actually uh, wired to process spatial data. And so when you present to your brain, to your eyes, an object that is fused uh, with the or surrounding world, the impression that you get from that object is much more stronger. So these two advantages, I, I would say that, uh, I mean, really people should, should realize that. And this is a, like a, a, a very, I mean, a low hanging fruit about the reason why to build in AR, but I, I can pass the... Yeah, then we can consider also what kind of business models we can represent inside these metaverses. No? In, uh, in our opinion, uh, we will see a migration uh, from the web, this web 2 space to the Web3. In a way, you can replicate the same uh, business models. We are talking about uh, uh, the monetization system based on advertising, on the fact that, in, for example, for a game, you can have... Uh, a ticketing system or a reward system. Uh, we can imagine in the next future to replicate e-commerce experiences inside this kind of uh, metaverses. So sometimes people is a little bit confused about uh, what are the opportunities to enter in the metaverses. The opportunity, first of all, is to change the way to browse the content. But if you are talking about the business model, uh, the business model are still the same. So advertising, uh, e-commerce experiences, games uh, with uh, premium uh, uh, services of ticketing, uh, live events, uh, and so on. So uh, talking about the way you can browse uh, this kind of content, of course, right now you, you, you are using an, a simple smartphone, but uh, uh, we put ourselves like an infrastructure. So we imagine an, a future where uh, when the glasses will happen, uh, we uh, are uh, going to be cheaper for the market, uh, probably we, we switch the way we spend our time during the day from a 2D screen to something that is fused with the reality. So, of course, we are, we are talking about a mixed reality. I, can, I come from a, a nine years of experience in a, a B2B uh, software uh, building of uh, mobile apps for augmented reality. And so I know 
very well the fact that sometimes the people say, okay, it's good, but uh, I still need to use a smartphone to have an eye to the reality and uh, to overimpose the content is not so cool to you to have your hands a smartphone for that. Uh, we see in, the, in, the, in, the, in this, uh, we, we saw also that in this year uh, uh, that uh, happens on the market that some kind of very costly glasses like the OLENS, uh, like the Magic Leap, uh, but uh, our glasses that you know cost around uh, 3K, 4K, and this something is not achievable by the masses. So what is needed to the mix of reality right now is a, a cheap glass. We hope that Apple or Samsung or the big corporates will exit soon with that. We will approach the market with something that the masses will begin to use. In that moment, probably we see something very important in the in the in a way that people will change the the time we spend on the screen, passing from passing from a to the screen to the reality. Thank you, brilliant. So much food for thought there. Um, to round this up and get some final thoughts, Davide, do you mind talk, talking about how businesses can harness AR solutions today and then also speak on your predictions for this technology in the near future? And Diego, I'd love your thoughts as well. Uh, yes, uh, should, should I start? Yeah, yeah please, please. Well, yeah. So basically, what can they do right now? In over, for example, we try to uh, remove friction to enter to the metaverse. It's created two kind of ways to create experiences. The first one is a web builder where a no coder man can simply enter a website, can drag and drop and modify through a 3D editor the content and can simply upload the content. Like a, you can imagine, like a WordPress. In a WordPress, uh, when War, 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 WordPress approached the market, approached the market in the past. Uh, uh, a lot of people began to customize by themselves uh, their website uh, without a specific knowledge for that. So we imagine the same thing also for the for uh, our our platform. So you are an auto coder, you can uh, use your creativity to create the, a good experience with uh, the animation, some logics, uh, simply drag and dropping, and uh, uh, doing uh, something that everybody is uh, doable uh, to, to 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 approach. The second aspect is, is the fact that we created also an SDK that is based on Unity 3D. You know, Unity 3D is a very uh, popular platform uh, together with the Unreal Engine. And uh, through the SDK, you can give more expressivity to your uh, experience. Like in WordPress, in WordPress, of course, you can create uh, in 10 minutes a website with a, a standard template, if you would like. But if you want to create custom uh, experiences also in the web, you need to be a developer. You need to create your specific function to create uh, the, uh, the the right experience you, you, you have to do. So we have in this way, first of all, we permit the also the business, uh, uh, the businesses to enter in the metaverse with something that could be from zero to something more complex to text to the SDK. And uh, we imagine the next future where basically uh, our SDK, in general, the SDK, so all the metaverses platform become more and more expressive. So in a way, you can create and replicate all the business models that are already live inside the web to, web to space. And we imagine also an evolution when uh, the, the glasses will be on the market uh, for the masses. So in that way, you have to imagine not only to change uh, the way you develop, but also talking about the UX, uh, so the user experience, uh, probably the, the, there will be a, a new way to think about also the experiences because the content will be around you. You will interact with something that is in the space. We imagine the, and, uh, basically with the glass and, uh, and, uh, and the interaction and then and tracking and the face tracking, all this stuff that uh, must be coherent with the, the experience you like to push. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. If, if I can add to that, um, I mean, again, in, in Davide already touched on, on this. Uh, I mean, r right now we're on average we're spending six point five hours uh, staring at our smartphones, and before, I mean, uh, we're spending more time probably. I mean, on the desktop, but now. I mean, 60% of the time of interaction with the web is through the mobile phone. And so uh, the smart glasses, some, some, someone uh, describes it, thinks about like a dystopia. Uh, but actually, uh, I think it will be 
uh, like a very positive step. Because if you think about that, we will switch our attention from looking down to heads up again and looking at the reality. So being back in reality, but just having this augmented. And probably in the next five to 10 years, uh, looking at somebody just staring at his phone will be as strange as seeing today sometimes somebody trying to use T9 to send messages with his uh, Nokia phone. And so really, uh, we think that in some way we are underestimating how big the impact would be of that. Uh, also because uh, really once the uh, visual technology, so once we will have uh, uh, I mean, a cheap enough and widespread enough uh, device uh, to actually have augmented reality, the way we will interact with information in general uh, will change. And again, the reason is the one that I was mentioning at the beginning, the fact that we are physical beings, we are, our brains are trained to actually process partial data around us. And so this will be just a larger way, I mean, a better way to funnel uh, information and to consume information uh, for the final users. So the way also we think about uh, over is uh, at, a, at a high level, we don't really identify with our app itself, uh, but with the data layer that we are building. So if you try to sublimate what we're building, it's a system to connect uh, 3D assets, 3D information to space and creating the infrastructure for that. So once we have this infrastructure, you can actually browse this through our app, or you can browse it through smart glasses or whatever, not necessarily need to be asked to actually also build um, the browser of this of this kind of, like in the web at the end of the day. So, uh, I mean, now, now we uh, kind of forget the, uh, back the days of Netscapes and Explorer and so on, uh, but really the, idea of uh, who builds the content and who builds the browsers, uh, the browsing software, the browsing technologies, something will be even more separating that that is now. Thank you. That's such an insightful overview from the both of you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you both joining me today. Uh, I want to know what the best place to reach over is. What's the uh, best call to action for our audience? Uh, well, I mean, the, I think the first thing that uh, I mean the audience could do is, is try to download the app and test it out just to have an impression, a first impression of what you can do and what are the experiences. Then, of course, to learn more, the best way is to go through the website and also all the social media where we are active, for example, Telegram or Discord. We have always somebody answer you, answering to your question. Also, if you are a creator, uh, we have specific channels uh, for people that are building on the platform. And of course, please just use the official links from uh, the bottom of our website because uh, uh, we are in AR, but we are also in crypto and you know, crypto is a kind of hardware, so everybody will try to take a little piece of you. So please just use the, uh, I mean, uh, the standard channels that are, uh, I mean, are on our website. Cool, brilliant. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Rory Greener from XR Today. You can get more XR news by following our social pages. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.